Okay, good day students. So we are now in the last part of our GE self first semester 2021-2022. This would be the synthesis of our course. When we talk about synthesis, this would be an overview of all the things that we had done for the class. This will also describe the learnings that we had during the course of our discussion, as well as an evaluation and a self-reflection of the different things that we have accomplished, the objectives that we aim to uh, achieve during the semester. So let me uh, proceed to the next part of the slide. So as a house rule, though this will not be a live discussion, this is a recorded video, we always advocate that students will promote pagiging magalang, being on time, as well as respect for others, respect for bandwidth, respect for time. So as we proceed through this particular GE course, we are guided by our course syllabus. So the course syllabus is ad it adheres to the university's vision to become a premier university in a global community, as well as the vision of NVSU, which is to develop an empowered, productive, and morally upright citizenry through high-quality, innovative, and relevant instruction, research, extension, and entrepreneurial programs adhering to international standards. With this, goal one is particularly the concern of the academe, which is to adapt and address itself as a functional learning center for innovative programs as a model instruction and enabling its graduates to be empowered and globally competitive through the provision of undergraduate and gradu graduate education, which meet international standards of quality and excellence. So hopefully uh, you are able to see the implication that our course adherence to quality and excellence would always be part of the instruction, will always be part of what you're doing, and would always be part of how I give instructions and demands to the class. Okay, so we all know that when we talk about the subject GE self, this is merely understanding who we are. We are searching for our identities. So as we search through our, uh, as we search for our identities, we are trying to advocate here the uh, self-identity, looking at the different factors that may influence our sense of self, as well as the different factors that we could change so that we could be a better version of who we are. So this particular thing about our GE self course is adhered to the acts, which would be the uh, individual goals of the university. So when we say ACTS, A stands for academic excellence. That's why in our class, we always adhere to a quality type of instruction, a quality type of activity output or assignment output. Second would be letter C, cultural diversity. In our class, we always look into how different we are from each other and how we should respect as well as appreciate the different um, cultural upbringings, the cultural affordances that we have. T would be technological advancement. I know this pandemic, this COVID-19 pandemic, had been both a challenge and an opportunity for us. Some of us are struggling with our um, technological know-how. And hopefully in this course, we're able to learn from one another, okay? And lastly, letter S, social responsibility. Getting to know who we are does not stop there. The aim of the course does not stop with knowing what are the factors that influence who you are. But instead, we look at uh, trying to look at your better or trying to advocate your potential, your greater potential, trying to know your potential so that you could be a source of solution to the different issues or problems in your community. So that is as social responsibility. Okay, so 
the main question that we're asking for this particular subject is who am I? As we look at in, as we look into this particular illustration here, you would see there an illusion or a certain drawing of a person trying to transverse towards the sun. Okay, it has symbolic meaning in a sense that the road towards our goal is never a straight path. There are always hindrances, there are always obstacles, there would always be detour in trying to reach our goals. But as we move towards our goal, as this individual moves towards the sun, may he or she be able to know herself so that she could walk through this road with confidence and with esteem. Okay, so those would be the objective of the course. Okay. So for this particular course, as I dis, uh, discussed the introduction or the definition of the course uh, from Ched, this would be the different course outcomes. Let me read it. So the first one is discuss the different representations and conceptualization of the self from various disciplinal perspectives. Second, compare and contrast how the self has been represented across different disciplines and perspectives. Third, examine the different influences, factors, and forces that shape the self. Uh, that would be third. Fourth, demonstrate, demonstrate critical thinking, reflective thoughts or thinking in analyzing the development of one's self and identity to de by developing a theory of the self. Five, explore the different aspects of the self and identity. identity. Six, demonstrate critical reflective thought in integrating the various aspects of the self and identity. Seven, identify the different forces and institution that impact the development of the various aspects of self and identity. Eight, Examine one's self against the different aspects of self discussed in class. Though we do not have so much class discussion, but hopefully the way wherein I demanded you to form a group and try to have group discussion, group sharing, then it could be a way for you to examine your idea about the self in contrast or in similar to the ideas of your classmates or group mates. Number nine, define the theoretical underpinnings of how to manage and care for the different aspects of the self. Then, acquire and hone new skills. Hopefully, one of the skills would be improvement of your communicative skills, learnings for better managing of oneself and behavior. Another skill that hopefully you were able to gather here would be the metacognitive strategies in learning, as well as the self-care skills. And lastly, apply these new knowledge to one's self and functioning for a better quality of life. So these are the specific outcomes of our course. Okay, so... As I try to sum up these different outcomes, I believe the thing that we're looking here or the concept that we're looking here would be independent learning. As students learn to become more independent, as students learn to make things on their own with small assistance from their teachers as well as from their classmates, they are able to persist, meaning despite the challenges, despite the, the slow or no internet connection, no gadget, no updated gadget, still you're able to submit your papers. And then despite the fact that we are not near each other, geographically and physically near at each, uh, with each other, you are engaged, be it cognitive, emotional, and behavioral engagement. Okay. I also appreciate the effort of students wherein they will find ways in order for them to be more engaged. We commonly call that in the liter literature of psychology as agentic engagement. Okay. So hopefully in this particular course, you were curious, you were self-motivated, 
even without rewards, you still do your best in trying to accomplish the tasks. You are a risk taker. You do not sit on your laurels and say, this is what I can do. Nothing more. But instead, you take challenges and try to find new avenues. I believe some students who were not used to making videos were compelled to use video making so that they could have a better output. Try to take initiative. There are some students who help their classmates even without them being told so. Okay. Resilient. Despite the drawbacks, there are some students who I believe during their senior and junior high school are academic scholars. They are dean's listers or they are honor, um, what we call academic scholars, honor rolls. Mga by, uh, valedictorian, salutatorian, or honorable mentions. Ganun sila grumadwi. But as they reach college, there are some challenges. It's not that easy compared to elementary or high school. But still, they would tell me, Ma'am, I will do it even though I do not know how to do it, but I'll ask for help from you and from your classmate. Okay. There are exemplary students who uh, exhibit good time management. Ang deadline next week, two weeks before, natapos na nila, nagsasabit na. And I also appreciate students who are very reflective that sometimes they would have this aha moment as they try to reflect and look back on their past experiences. I think, ma'am, they would say in their output, this is one of the reasons why my thinking is, is, is like this. Okay, clear. That when I went to a certain place, it had encouraged me to take engineering courses. Those would be some of the reflections. Next, accountable. There are students who would not blame their classmates, their teachers, the instruction, but instead they will take responsibility of their action. And lastly, as we finish this course, hopefully you become critical thinkers. Okay, so the main question that we had posted for this subject is, what is the self? Okay, so what is the self is synonymous to the idea of who am I? Okay, we try to answer this by looking into the different perspectives. Okay, so we have here the sociological perspective, how, how our society, social interaction, social roles, gender had influenced our idea of who we are. Or even psychological, meron yun dun sa may upper left-hand corner ng drawing. So, for psychological, we look at different developmental stages. We look at the different idea about the self, the social self, the ideal self, the real self, or the actual self, and how it influences our confidence and self-esteem. Esteem. Okay. We also discuss, in passing, the individualistic and collectivist uh, culture or the self. Okay. So, for individualist, the reference of who the person is would always be towards the individual. Who am I would always describe what I thought who I am. Okay, clear. For collectivists, the reflection of who the person is would depend upon other people, would depend upon his parents, his family, his friends, the institution where he comes from, or the different social interactions as well as community where he belongs. Okay. Related to it would be our culture. We saw in our GE self how cultural influences could influence. Cultural influences have a great impact to us. So you would have here the different child rearing practices. For the modular, they reflect on their childhood experiences and how these experiences, this cultural upbringing had influenced who they are at the moment. And the first perspective, the most integrated perspective that we had to use would be the, the, the picture below, culture, the philosophical perspective. Okay, so let's have a recap of these different perspectives. Let's start with what is the nature of the self? Okay, so why is there a need for us to understand the nature of the self? Like philosophers in ancient Greece, they would have this adherence to the oracle of Delphi, 
wherein this oracle of Delphi would tell them what would happen in the future, that leaders, military, politicians would come to this particular individual and ask them what will be happening in the future. But in one of the stones engraved in that particular temple, Temple of Apollo, would be the dictum, know thyself. In order for us to know what will happen to us in the future, we should also know, we should know what had happened to us in the past as well as how we reflect on it in the, in the present. So the Oracle of Delphi would tell us to reflect on how or what we are or who we are. Okay. So through this, we are able to meet different philosophers. So the question who you are, is answered by the concept of what is consciousness, identity, and the self. So in one aspect of who we are would be Socrates, Plato, and St. Augustine, wherein they said that the self is equated to the immortal soul, that who we are is governed by our soul. Descartes would also have the same idea, the dualist idea about the self, that the body is different from the mind. But for him, it's the thinking which is the self. Okay, so the thinking self. John Locke would identify personal identity as something which is a reflection of our self-consciousness, our awareness of the things that are happening to us, meaning the things that our senses had captured. That would be who we are. For us, for David Hume, he would say that we do not have a concrete example of who we are. That's why he said there is no such thing as the self. But instead, the self is a bundle of impression and ideas that had come to us and keeps on changing through time. Okay. Maurice Merleau-Ponty would tell us that the self is something which is very difficult to define because it depends upon one person to the other. The subjective, the different influences could be the source of who we are, not the commonality of experiences. Okay. Paul Churchland and his wife would say that the self is equated to the brain. What the brain is would be the self. Whatever mental processes, we he, um, cognitive processes that are happening in the mind would define who we are. Whereas Gilbert, Gilbert Ryle would tell us that the self is how we behave. For Sigmund Freud, the self is composed of the unconscious, the conscious, and the subconscious with the emphasis on the unconscious. And lastly, for Immanuel Kant, he said that the self is a unifying subject. It organizes the things that we see, the consciousness, and the experiences that we had in the past with our categories of the definition of the things that we had seen in the past. So it's a unifying subject. So this would be a summary. Okay, let me discuss because this is one of the most uh, exhaustive and the most challenging part of Jesus. Okay, so for Socrates, Plato, para mas maintindihan natin, and St. Augustine, they have the same idea. The self is equated to the soul. Okay, clear? But the main difference between or among these three or between the two actually, Socrates and Plato are in one dimension and St. Augustine would be the different, uh, with would be in a different dimension is that for Socrates of Plato, the idea, the idea of the soul is something which transcends the body. Okay, clear? So it would be we have a certain idea, the formulation of ideas of what is beauty, what is excellence, what is peace. That is part of the soul. Whereas for St. Augustine, he is, since he is a theologian, he's a priest and a saint and that's um, priest and then he became a saint, for him, the soul would be something that speaks about our union with God. Okay, clear. So let's try to see it clearly. Okay, so for Socrates, 
Socratic method, if we keep on asking who we are, then we gain knowledge about who we are. That's why he would say that it's more of questioning what we know. Because through questioning, we're able to examine our life. Okay. As a reflection of Socratic method by Socrates, as well as his virtue of happiness, Richard Tarnas, one of the philosophers, would say that for Socrates, he taught us that happiness is the consequence not of physical or external circumstances of wealth or power or reputation, but of living a life that is good for the soul. Yet, to live a genuinely good life, one must know what is the nature and the essence of the good. So if we keep on exploring the soul through questioning the nature of the self, we get to know what is the real happiness. Okay, next. For Plato, instead of looking at the soul as something which is one entity, he describes the soul having three categories. The first one would be the spirited, which will deal with our biological desires, our desire for uh, to satisfy our hunger, our desire to satisfy our sexual needs. Next, uh, we also have the appetitive, which would be the, uh, sorry, appetitive would be the biological, the basic instincts. Then we have the spirited, which will be the emotional, meaning this would be our desire, our passion. And lastly, the reasoning. For Plato, reasoning should be ahead or way above the appetitive and the spirited soul. So for this particular drawing, if we would say reason, I think or I must seek understanding above all search for the truth. Whereas when we talk about spirited, spirited, emotional, I must be careful when I cross the road and ensure I retain my sense of individualism. This is my passion of doing things. And lastly, appetitive. This would be my biological satisfaction of my basic instinct, which is the food, drink, reproduction, shelter, and sleep, and others. Okay, next. So as I illustrate this, one of the things that I appreciate from your work would be the work or the work of this group of Ms. Bautista, Briso, Guzman, Gano, Tagard. Uh, Kachima, Nachima, sorry, Basilio Agsaway and Biagan Jr. So for them, the genuine search for happiness should always be looking into our reason. Okay, so that would be their idea. Okay, next for Saint Augustine, as the soul is the life of the body, so meaning the soul is equated to the self. So God is the life of the soul. As therefore the body perishes when the soul lives it, so the soul dies when God departs from it. So it's our religious, our relationship, union with God that defines who we are. That is St. Augustine. Okay. Next. So let's try to contrast Freud, Sigmund Freud, Jean Locke, as well as René Descartes. Okay, so for these three individuals, they have an idea that the idea of the self is more of a philosophical dimension. But the difference is where uh, difference lies on the field where they came from. For John Locke, because he's a physician, it's more of the empiricist, what he could observe. And what he could observe would be the consciousness. That's why he would equate the self as the conscious or the awareness of things. Whereas for Sigmund Freud, who is a neurologist, he would look into the self as a part of our brain activity, a part of the process of changing who we are from our past experiences to the things that we tend to forget in the present. Okay, clear? So, as a neurologist, he would say that past experiences are important part of who we are. And they may be sometimes suppressed, 
hidden from us because of the unconscious, but it could greatly affect the idea of who we are. Neurologist Sigmund Freud. For as for René Descartes, the same, he's a dualist like Plato, Socrates, St. Augustine, that the body and the soul are different. But for him, the soul would be the mind, the thinking, the thinking part. Since he is a rationalist, he would uphold that the idea or the knowledge about the self is gained through reasoning, trying to think about the things that we see. Okay, It's not the body which is important. Actually, the body does not affect, according to René Descartes, does not affect the mind of the person because the mind is superior than the body. That's why a very good dictum of René Descartes is that uh, ergo, uh, sorry, cognito ergo sum, cognito, let me see, cognito ergo sum, meaning I think, therefore I am. That's why the body does not influence the mind. But for some of you, you try to disagree with the idea of Plato. That sometimes the body, the experience of the body influences the thinking of the mind. Even the mind influences the body. Okay. So that would be René Descartes. For John Locke, remember what I've said? Our knowledge comes from our experiences, from our consciousness, from our self-awareness. That sometimes when we think of things and put them in our memory, there are some concepts that may be distorted because of our creativity, because of our imagination. That's why we sometimes have faulty memory. That's why the question, can you really trust your memory? Science and even psychology have proven, no, we cannot. Because what really happens is, to illustrate how faulty our memory is, would be the different factors that may influence eyewitness testimony. Sometimes our memory can be contaminated. The questions, the leading questions could lead to faulty memory. For example, you went to the mountain and then got some uh, firewoods for cooking. That's what happened. Okay, clear. But if, for example, certain, someone would say, ah, you met someone, then your mind would think, did I meet someone? Maybe I met an old man. Because usually that's our concept of going to the mountains, trying to meet someone. See, the question had influenced our memory. Or it could be also influenced by stress. It could also be influenced by the lineups. Titingnan mo kung sino ba dito yung mukhang criminal. The different questions like what I've said. Or sometimes we do not see the whole picture. It's one, only one perspective. Or we have biases towards other people. Sometimes if the person looks like, I do not want to tell you what a criminal looks like because I really do not know, but we have this particular idea of what a criminal looks like. Okay, so those would be the idea of why sometimes we could not defend, depend on our memory to tell who we are. Okay, next. For David Hume, he said that there's no self. There's no idea. There's, self is merely an illusion. Why? Because the self is merely a collection of our impression, a collection of our ideas. So if you have time, you could read through this comic strip wherein David Hume is um, represented to be Sherlock Holmes. If you're a fan of comics and fan of reading some um, novels from British literature, Sherlock Holmes would be one of the most popular uh, carton car uh, literate literature characters in literature. Okay, so he is always doubting. So for David Hume, he advocates skepticism. Okay, wherein he keeps on doubting what is present. We may not know the real picture. He, that's his main idea. That's why for him, the self is something which is not a concrete example. A self is not something that could be, we could establish. Why? Because the self is merely 
a collection, a bundle of our impression and ideas. Like for example, last week, you got yourself burned by a lighted candle. So your reaction is, ouch, that's an impression, correct? But if you try to remember it a week after, would you still say, ah, masakit yung kamay ko? No. But instead, you'll say, ang tanga-tanga ko naman. So the idea of what had happened to you in the past, two weeks ago, an impression, may be different idea at the moment. The same, the idea of who we are in the past may not be the same who we are at the moment. Okay, naintindihan? So that would be David Hume. Next, so for Sigmund Freud, like what we said, Sigmund Freud would have an idea that the mind is composed of three levels, the conscious, the subconscious, and the unconscious. So meaning, the things that influence who we are, the same with René Descartes, the thinking self. Sigmund Freud would also have the same thing, the thinking self, okay, is influenced by these levels of consciousness. The conscious, the things that we see, the thoughts that we could think, our name, okay, or the subconscious. This could be the memories that we have implanted in our mind. This could be stock knowledge that we have, okay, or the unconscious. It is a result of hidden or repressed thoughts and feelings that had happened in the past that may have an influence of who we are. Furthermore, our self could be an influence of our id, ego, and superego. If we would look into um, Plato's idea about the different concept of the soul, id is almost the same with the spiritin. It is the satisfaction, the pleasure center of our basic instinct. Okay, clear? Super ego would be our conscience. The norm, the standard of what is right or wrong. And ego could be the reason, the part which balances the id and the super ego. So that's who we are, according to Sigmund Freud. Influenced by our id, ego, superego, as well as our conscious, subconscious, and the unconscious. Okay. So for Immanuel Kant, he would say that our knowledge or in our subject, the idea of who we are, the self, begins with the senses, proceeds then to the understanding, and ends with reason. So meaning it's the reason the unifying part of who we are that will tell us who we are. Okay, so let me illustrate this. So for example, for um, Immanuel Kant, he would say that if we see something, that's the senses that is operating. Okay, we see something. The interpretation of what we are seeing depends upon our prior experiences, depends upon the categories that we have established in the past, as well as the intellectual operation in our mind. Okay, clear? Which could be governed by our reasoning. Okay, so for Immanuel Kant, the idea of who we are depends upon what we see, depends upon how these different things can be categorized in our brain. And lastly, and more, more importantly, would be how we try to make reasons, think about what we are seeing. Okay, clear? So in trying to see about um, Emmanuel Kant, though his theory is quite diverse than what we are discussing at the moment, but our reasoning part could be a part wherein it is something which wherein we have that particular sense of quality, excellence, and identity. The same with Plato and uh, Plato and Socrates. That's why I would like you to um, think about this statement by Immanuel Kant. But a lie is a lie, and it itself intrinsically evil, whether it be told with good or bad intents. Sometimes when we look at a certain situation wherein it's better to lie, but our conscience will say it's still lying. That's why we feel guilty even though it's a white lie. We have a good intention. So for his sense of morality, he would say, and my impression is that, through the eyes of a child, you will see the world as it should be. If it is a lie, it's a lie. 
if it is really bad, then it's bad no matter what the intention is. Okay, so hopefully in your ethics class, your teacher will discuss this more. Okay, so next. For Gilbert Ralph, he would say that the self is the way I act. Okay, one of the things that struck me as I read through your different discussion would be um, what was submitted by this particular group. Di ko mabasa ng mabuti. Uh, makikita nyo naman, because if I read and then I do not read all the names they may get uh, mad at me, but then this group, one of the things that they stated here would be something that you should always remember about David Ryle. Uh, so that would be the group of Mr. Belusan, Carbonell, Alejandro, Torres, Dakel, and Ramba. The idea that your output is the reflection of your personality. The way you act reflects who you are. That would be David Ryle. Okay, next. So for Maurice Jean-Jacques, yun ang kompletong pangalan niya, Merlu Ponti, di ba mahaba? Kasi his French national, the word is nothing but world as meaning. So the self depends upon the interpretation of the individual. So this is the subjectivity of the idea about the self. Psychology philosophy could not define who you are, but instead, it's you giving meaning to your experiences that will define who you are. Okay. So one good example is this, the things that shape me. Meaning, the idea of who you are may not be defined by the theories, but it's who you are, meaning it's you yourself who would define the things that greatly affected your concept of the self. Okay, so for Trisha Colleen uh, El Banbuena, she would say that these are the things that shape me. We may have the same factors that may shape who we are, but our interpretation of these things may differ from one person to the other. That would be for Merlu Ponti. Okay, so next. So for the wife and the husband tandem of church land, they say that the self is the brain. The mental processes, the cognitive processes that are happening in the brain defines who we are. Okay, clear. So actually in science, in neuropsychology, this is a proven fact that the self, the seat of the self is in the brain. So the brain tells us who we are. Okay, so a good reflection of this one would be our beautiful mind is the sexiest part of who we are. Meaning, if we define ourselves to be sexy, it's the brain that tells us that. Okay, so this is the work of Miss Kabia Famatiga, Bulangit, Agas, Lunag, Duyapat, Jimenez, Marijem, Balog, and Mata. So they share to us that the mind is the sexiest part of the self which makes the self sexy because this is the three-pound organ wherein we look. This is the seat of intelligence, interpreter of the senses, initiator of body movements, and controller of behavior. Everything that we do, the mind, okay, the brain of the individual. Okay. The same thing that the power rangers have conceptualized. So the part of their body, which is the sexiest, would be the brain. So let me just look into their... Uh, ito yung maganda nilang fun. Basahin ko ng mabuti. Everyone is so knowledgeable. We all learn from each other's perspective and thoughts on why the brain is the sexiest part of the body. Everyone gave a good point as to why the brain is the sexiest part of the body. This is a video that they had done. This is one of the good videos submitted this semester. Maybe you could watch it. And they have different um, research-based answers for why the brain is the sexiest. Okay, so this is the group of Bernadette, Dioko, Jaco, sorry, Dorothy, Louise, and Jonathan. Okay, so uh, the Power Rangers group. Okay, so we had just finished the philosophical perspective of who we are. Now, another perspective of defining who we are 
would be the psychological. As this particular illustration would tell you, it depends upon what developmental stage you had experienced and successfully passed. So moments in life, different stages, different developmental levels would define who you are. Okay, that's the perspective of psychology. So one of the psychologists would define the self as the me and I. So for the I, it is the thinking self. For the me, this would be the experience of the self, the empirical self, meaning the different aspects of the self, which we had discussed in unit two, the unpackaging the self. Okay, to better understand William James' idea, when we talk about our self-image, it is governed by what we think we should be and who we actually are, the ideal self and the actual self. And this has a great influence to our self-esteem, the positive or negative evaluation of who we are. Usually, when our self-image would have ideal self equated to the actual self, then our self-esteem could be higher compared to those we wherein their ideal self is not equated to their actual self. Okay. Like what Carl Rogers would tell us, the incongruence, meaning not the same, self-image and ideal self would tend to give us an idea of how a person would actualize. It is quite problematic to reach your potential if your imagined self is not the same with who you are. Okay, clear? Naintindihan yan? Okay, next. So for Albert Bandura, his idea about the self is something which is agentic, meaning the person is embodied with natural ability, belief system, and regulatory capabilities and functions for him to exercise so that he could reach his goals. And one of the things that he advocated is that humans as an agency, as a person of action, should undergo intentionality, forethought, reactiveness, and reflectiveness so that he could reach his goal. Okay, we will discuss this further in the part three, the managing and caring for the self. Okay, Sigmund Freud, philosopher as well as a psychologist, would tell us that the self is defined by the different psychosexual stages of development. We have the oral, the anal, the phallic, the latency, as, and the last one would be the genital. So if the individual would either be overly satisfied or underly satisfied in these different stages of sexual development, it could impact the personality of a person. Example would be in the oral stage. The pleasure center in the oral stage would be kaya nga oral, the mouth area. So for the mouth area, if the person is overly satisfied, he may develop a personality wherein he would be uh, overly satisfied, very talkative, a person who keeps on giving different opinions, suggestions. You may draw madalda. But if, for example, a person may be underly satisfied during the anal stage, she may develop what we call obsessive-compulsive personality disorder. Phallic, latency, and genital stages would tell us our sexual orientation. Okay. In phallic stage, remember, uh, the um, Oedipus complex, the Electra complex, which you could read through, or something which was already discussed in your senior high school. So for the phallic stage, that the son would imitate the father, father because it is a way for him to get the attention of the mother. So if he has a good father figure, father figure, not necessarily the father, he may develop characteristics of a male. Okay. Even in genital period and latency period, that would be for sexuality. Okay, so those would be things. Next, we also have Eric Erickson's psychosocial development theory that our different stages would enable us to develop some of the virtues. Like for example, in infancy, you may develop the sense of hope when you trust your caregiver. The main thing that babies do is to cry. 
Why would they cry? Because this is the only communication that they could have for them to relate their needs. They cry if they are hungry. They cry if they need some attention. They cry if their diapers are already wet or they have soiled their diapers. So if they can trust other people, they will develop the, the virtue of hope. Okay. In your stage, that would be the young adult or even teenage years, identity versus role confusion. This is the stage we're in. You get to know who you are better so that you could identify who you are or yourself. Okay, clear. If not, you keep on changing who you are. You keep on changing the things that you like just because it's the trend, just because it's the craze. So the virtue developed here is fidelity, meaning loyalty to the self. If this is who I am, no matter what my friends would tell me, I will stick to what I believe in. That is fidelity during teenage years. And then if you grow older, intimacy versus isolation. As a young adult, you get to find love. Okay, clear. So for intimacy, the virtue vir intimacy versus isolation, the virtue here would be intimacy or for some love. Getting to know other people better, having a good relationship with them. Okay, clear. So sometimes having an identity is a prerequisite of intimacy. Why? Because you could not share something you do not know. If you do not know who you are, in a relationship, you do not merely hold hands while walking, may pass way, sway, pa. But instead, as you hold hands, as you try to kiss one another, you share who you are with that person. That is intimacy. Okay? So here would be some of the reflection of how psychology could influence uh, the study of psychology, the different developmental stages could influence who we are. So in your activity 2.B and in even activity 2.A, you get to look into your childhood experiences and try to give us an idea of how these past experiences could influence who you are at the moment. Okay? So thank you to... Nababasa ko ba? Ah, hindi. Sorry. Anyways... Okay. Next, we also have Maslow's hierarchy of needs or motivational model, wherein we have deficiency and growth needs. So the main thing about Maslow, like what Carl Rogers would say, is that for the self to self, for the self to actualize. Okay, clear. At the onset, we only have deficiency needs, which is the physiological, our need or our hunger, our thirst, these different drives. To be safe, safety needs, belongingness needs, to be part of a group, esteem needs for self-confidence and uh, esteem needs, self-confidence, and your evaluation, positive evaluation of who you are. Okay. As an individual transcend beyond the deficiency needs, he would look into his growth needs, meaning he would focus on intellectual growth. His idea of what is quality, beauty, and excellence. And then his idea of self-actualization, reaching for his potential and going beyond his potential, which is transcendence. Okay. We also have Kohlberg's moral, develop moral theory of moral development. Okay. This is particularly discussed and tasked to the modular group, wherein there are three levels of moral development, you have the pre-conventional before the society. You know, ibig sabihin ng convention. It's level two, conventional during our interaction with our society or the group that we have, and the post-conventional. Okay, so for the pre-conventional, it says here that our sense of who we are depends upon first stage, step one, punishment and obedience orientation. If you have been punished in the past as a child, you would say what you had done is wrong. But if you're rewarded, what you had done is good. Okay, clear. Next. For step two, which would be the uh, approval stage, the idea of who we are, the idea of what is right or wrong depends upon the approval that we get. If someone would tap you in the head or in your shoulder and say, ang bait bait mo naman, then what you're doing is correct. That's when we were little. But if you say salbahe, Masungit, ma, ma, salbahing bata, 
then what you're doing is wrong because you are basing it from the approval or disapproval of other people. Okay, clear? So that would be step two. So in level two convention, it would be the, the things that could, I sorry, that would be step two. Palayon. Step two would be step three, sorry. For hedonistic, this would be the reward orientation. Okay, so for conventional, if people would say good boy, good girl, then that would be what is right. But if they say you are a bad boy, then that would be what is wrong. Okay, for, so for step four, for conventional, this would deal with the rules and regulation of authorities. So if you follow rules and regulation, then what you're doing is correct. Okay, so for post-conventional, it's no longer other people which or who will tell you what is right or wrong, but instead, it's your own value of what you think is right or wrong. That's why for st step five, it will deal with what you think step five and step, step six would deal with what will, uh, something's good if it would benefit greater majority, step five. Something is good if I know step six, if I know that this is the right principle to uphold. No matter what other people would say, if I think this is good, then this is good. That is step six. Okay. Only a few people would say that had reached step six. These are the martyrs like Gandhi in India or Jesus Christ for the Catholic religion. Okay. That whether they would be persecuted, they will be killed because of what they believe in, they still pursue because they know that is the right thing to do. Okay. So that would be moral development theory. So this is the Philippinized version of Kohlberg's moral development theory, wherein I asked them to react. So for the modular, I asked them to react whether what Mang Wan did was right or wrong. So the scenario is that in a certain town, there's Mang Wan with a very sick wife, and he's the only one earning for a living. And then one day, the wife got sick and she he has or she has to take the medicine. Unfortunately, the medicine hypothetically is only sold to one uh, to one store and it was made by a pharmacist. So the pharmacist, since she or he owns that particular patent of that medicine, could define the amount of amount, how much. He would sell that particular medicine. So men Mang Wan went to that pharmacy and asked for the uh, for the medicine. It was sold beyond what he could afford. So it was sold for ano ba yung tanong, uh, question? Parang more than five thousand pesos. Eh, ang ginom ang parang nagastos lang ng pharmacist nung ginawa niya yung gamot ay nasa five hundred pesos. So makikita niyo yung return of investment. So Nung hin nakalingat na yung pharmacy sa nung ginawa ni Mang Wan, ninakaw niya yung medicine at pinainom niya sa asawa niya para mabuhay yung asawa niya. At ang tanong ay, tama ba yung ginawa ni Mang Wan? So, you will have to defend your answer and try to see what level of moral development you belong. Okay, so that would be for uh, the Filipinized version of Kohlberg's moral development theory. Okay, next. Another perspective that we had discussed would be the sociology okay wherein we focus on the different sources of self the construction of the self that it depends upon the stories the narratives that we have it depends upon the plays and games that we did when we were little the social roles and identities assigned to us as well as the non-human objects okay so let me discuss this by looking into first the looking glass self by Charles Horton Cooley. So for him, our idea of who we are would be a reflection of how other people view us. That's the looking glass. Okay. So you would see here a reflection of the individual depending upon who's looking at him or who's describing him. It's described by his mother and father as someone who is really good. Or his girlfriend would say, ah, Maskulado, maganda ang kanyang physique. Or his older brother na pwedeng dependahan. Or his ex-girlfriend. These are the different perceptions that could define who we are according to Kuli. Okay. So 
in defining who we are, first, we try to imagine how we would appear to other people. That's why before we go out of our houses, we look at the mirror and say, am I presentable? Because we are assuming that other people would give an impression of who we are. Okay, clear? Through our appearances. They would judge us through our appearances and say, this is that person, for example, the guy on the left, or this is that individual according to the woman on the left. And these impressions of other people define who we are. Okay, clear? Normally, the people, the important people, the significant individuals help us define who we are. That's according to Cooley. Okay, for George Herbert Mead, the theory of the self had evolved throughout time. At the onset, it would be through language. So remember, language is an important part of the society. Why? Because through language, we are able to give representation of the things that we experience. Like for a certain child, a representation that he is about to make um, poo-poo or wee-wee, yung term na poo and wee-wee would be representation of what is happening to him. Okay, clear? That would be language. Next, through place, the individual could also define the identities that he would be experiencing. Okay, clear? So for example, if he is closer to his mother, normally in the Baha'i Baha'ian play, he would depict some of the characteristics of the mother. He, he or she may even role play the, the part of the mother. Okay. Games is like place. However, for games, there is more at stake. There is the goal. And there's also the idea of winning in a game. So we try to define who we are through our games. Like for example, through a game, nung bata kami, shatong, pag lagi kang nananalo sa shatong, magaling kang bata. Okay, clear? So paano mo nalaman na magaling ka? It is because of the game that you play. Okay, clear? Naintindihan? So, that would be for George Her uh, Herbert Mead. Okay. Jean Baudrillard, a French philosopher, would tell us that nowadays, the self is the product of modern and postmodern society. Okay, clear? So, this is quite controversial and very up-to-date. Okay, let's try to discuss this. So, for... Baudrillard, Baud he would say that our reality is sometimes distorted, like the picture on the right side of this slide. So you see, is that a real man? No. It is something which is unreal. But nowadays, we tend to appreciate it. We call it abstract reason, abstract. That's appreciation part. But if we try to simulate it in our society, this thing should not happen. But why do we accept it? Because of what is happening in our modern societies. That our reality, because of exaggeration, had been stimulated to become a different one. Until such time, we create a simulacra. Simulacra. And this becomes hyper-reality. Okay, let me explain this. If you are a fan and if you are one of those individuals like me who would like to binge watch and just keep on laughing because of a good um, comedy show, then maybe you have watched Big Bang Theory. So for the Big Bang Theory, the main thing that you have to remember for this sitcom is it revolves around four gigs. We have here the one wearing the red checkered, um, Howard, Howard, then we have Raj, the one violet, the one in violet, then the guy in the green lantern t-shirt, that would be Sheldon, and the one with the jacket, the gray, uh, gray balloon, no, flesh jacket would be Leonard. So the center of this one would be the four individuals. And they are considered as geeks or nerds. Sa mga Pilipino, ito yung mga matatalino na pang minsan di maintindihan. Sa klase, meron yung super matalino. Okay, they are those. Okay. And the main leading lady in this part, in this sitcom would be Penny. Penny would be the ultimate representation of a bombshell. She is blunt. She is attractive. And compared to these four guys, 
he is less intellectual. Okay, clear? Naintindihan. So, here, the reality is that, the reality is that you have here a group of nerds and a bombshell, a woman, a bombshell penny who is their neighbor. That's a reality. It happens to everyone. Meron yung may kakilala kang mga matatalinong tao at meron naman yung maganda, yung popular na kaklase mo nung high school or nung elementary. Or nga yung college, yung popular. Kasi maganda, maayos, magandang tignan, nakakaasar. Anyways, oh, that would be Penny. Okay, clear? So, in this sitcom, do I like it? But then, as I try to watch it, it becomes an exaggeration of what is a geek. An exaggeration of what is a bombshell. Meaning, for Sheldon, one of the main characters, the one wearing the blue, uh, the green lantern t-shirt, would be a mean individual. Though he's very intelligent, he's a mean one. He would often not understand the feelings of other people. For, for us, if we are able to meet some geeks, some highly intellectual classmates, there are those who really could not understand other people. But there are also some intellectual classmates, matatalinong classmates, who could understand better our needs compared to some who don't or some who are not that intelligent compared to him. Anong ibig kong sabihin? Hindi lahat ng matatalino social, socially awkward. May mga matatalino tayong classmates na kayang makipagsabayan, makisalamuha sa mga classmates. But because of this reality, na-exaggerate. Na pag ikaw yung nanonood at naiimpluwensyahan ka, sinasabi mo na, ah, nerd kasi ako, kaya ako socially in-depth, in in inadequate, socially awkward. Okay, clear? Naintindihan? But what I'm telling you here is, they exaggerate the experience of the nerds. That's why they are creating a different reality. And we call that as, a, as hyper reality. Or hindi lahat ng magaganda boba. May mga magaganda na matalino din. May mga magaganda na hindi mean. May mga magagandang mababait. Kaya nga patuloy silang gumaganda kasi mabait sila. Okay, clear na intindihan? So this particular sitcom, though it is funny and it is really funny, it is like the drawing in the right part of the slide. It's an exaggeration of what we are experiencing. Okay, clear? Hindi ibig sabihin na geeks, lahat ng geeks mahilig sa mga Marvel movies, Marvel channels, yung iba, baka ang gusto nila ay Korean novella. No, those would be things. So we could not define who we are just by merely looking at this sitcom, just by merely the representation of social media, advertisement, and television. Okay. Who we are could also be influenced by our culture. So anthropology. It could be influenced by the place. Actually, every time I would uh, travel from Metro Manila to our province, if I pass by the uh, Dalton Pass, it will always remind me na malapit na ako sa Bayombo. Na at least three hours na sa Bayombong na ako or pagbabilis yung sinakyan ko, isang oras na sa Bayombong na ako. So, those different non-human interaction could influence also who we are, like in this community map. So, you would see here that, um, according to Ms. Fernandez, this different uh, prominent establishment in her community could influence who she is. Okay, clear? Napaka-green nga nung kanyang community. Okay, so those would be things we have to remember. Okay, I'll discuss Jean Baudillard later sa may material self. Okay, next, individualism and collectivism. So in individualism, that would be the Western word. Their definition of who they are is different from the collectivist or our definition of who we are. Our self-esteem is not only defined is not only defined by the congruence of the ideal self and the real self, but our self-esteem could be, according to collectivists, defined by our group. Pag nanalo yung grupo at kahit konti lang yung effort mo doon, tumatas ang self-esteem mo. 
Bakit? Kasi ang definition mo ng sarili mo ay depende sa grupong kinabibilangan mo. That is collectivist self. Okay? So for collectivist and individualist, these are some of the differences. You could read through it. Okay, next. So let's go now to the different aspects of the self. The first one is the physical self. Okay, please be reminded by, by Leonardo da Vinci's idea. Learn how to see, realize that everything connects to everything else. Okay, our idea of the physical self, meaning the outer appearance of who we are, could lead to our self-esteem. Sometimes when we look at our, the mirror, we may have a distorted and an ugly image of who we are. Okay, kahit hindi naman ganun yung outer appearance natin. Why is this so? Because we forget that we are individuals. Okay, clear? That's why sometimes we have to be teen and experience the drawing on the upper right-hand corner. We have here anorexia nervosa, yung hindi na kumakain. O kaya yung gustong magpapute. Kaya turok sila ng paturok, ng uh, ano yung pangpaturo, pangpapute, uh, glut, glutagen, glut, mm. But anyways, pampaturo o kaya rhinoplasty. Or they have a distorted image of who they are. Or when they eat, they vomit it because they keep on thinking teen is in, but it's not. If we remember this idea when we were taught in our elementary and preschool days, we are all got sweet bodies. Every fruit is different. Every individual is different. And every individual has a beauty in themselves. Okay, so like what the group of Miss Bautista, Briso, oh, parang parang sa ulit, Nachima, Nachima, Tagart, Gano, Agsaway, Guzman, Biagan, and Basilio would tell us there are lots of definition of beauty. But we have to remember that beauty is not only the things that we see. Beauty could be an internal part. That's why they say outer beauty attracts, but inner beauty captivates, mirror lie. They don't show what you what's inside. Okay, so remember to advocate the real and inner beauty. Okay, that's why do we have this idea of beauty in the outside? Because normally our society is quite judgmental. There's always here, there's always the idea that if you're attractive, you may be the best candidate. That's why we have the first impression, last concept, which is not really true because the first impression is just merely appearing at that particular instance at your best, but it's not who you really are. Okay, so that would be physical beauty. Okay, me and my sexuality, from this part, you should be able to define the difference between sex sexuality, and gender. They are different. Sex would be the biological makeup. Sexuality and gender may be sociological, but gender would be the uh, orientation of the individual towards the role that he is playing. Sexuality could be your sexual preferences, like the LGBTQA+. Okay, so those are things that you have to remember. Okay, next. So what's the difference between love, lust, and attraction? Okay, this is one of the discussion in the synchronous and asynchronous. Okay. So according to Robert Sternberg, we would know if what we're experiencing is love if it has the three components, passion, commitment, and intimacy. Next, we have the material self, that sometimes who we are, the bodily self, the physical self, could be extended to the material self. Sometimes our possession could define who we are. Ito na yung sinasabi ni uh, Jean Baudillard. Okay. So one good thing that I would always want you to remember would be a realization of Miss Kabahar. Okay. Wherein she said that humans are born with the ability to have a sense of self. To some sense, you are accurate than we today, uh, to some sense, you are accurate that we today describe our achievement mainly through materialism. It is not universal and it has not been a constant 
um, since its inception. It is only through the use of achievement of the Western capitalist culture. So, yung postmodernity uh, and uh, society that had defined how material self could influence our idea of who we are. The self-identity is a complex one. It's a self-evaluation. But as we evaluate who we are, it should not de be dependent on the material things. It should be dependent on how we are able to achieve our potential. Okay, clear? So those would be some realization. Okay, like what I've said, the negative effect of postmodernity, wherein we are defined by the expensive things that we have. Yung prestige symbol. Na pag ikaw ay may Ducati motorcycle compared to Yamaha motor, mas mayaman ka sa kanila. Oo naman, mas mayaman. Pero it doesn't mean you're a happier individual. Okay? Clear? Okay. So those things. Another thing about material self is the add to cart phenomenon. All of us had been buying our supplies via online shopping. Okay, clear? One of the things you have to remember here is, do we really need what we're shopping? Are we really, uh, do we really need those things? Yun ang unang tanong. Or we just want them because they are flashy, glittery, and it could increase our prestige. Try to see. A good thing about this group, the group of Mr. Maneng, Mar Martinez, Lamsis, and... Um, what? Sorry. Ano yung last one? Let's see. Parang nawala ako dun. Lamsis and... Venancio would say in their video, they had said that sometimes add to cart phenomenon would be a problem. But there are some buyers who are also problems to sellers. Not only sellers being problems to the buyers. Yung para bang yung buyer hindi niya nakuha yung dapat niyang makuha? Kasi hindi nagbabasa. <laughs> okay. Yun add to cart phenomenon. Pero pag minsan yung mga buyers din, na peperwisyo sila ng mga KJ ng mga KJ, yung mga bogus buyers. Yung mga sellers nagiging na influential or sila ay napapahamak ng mga bogus buyers. So that's one good thing that this group had explored. Okay, so next for the spiritual self, you should be able to define the difference between religion and spirituality. They may have, they may almost be the same thing. But then for religion, it is an organized system. For spirituality, it does not talk about any religion. Okay, clear? Spirituality actually is more profound. Okay, so during this pandemic, we're advocating that some of the losses that, may, that we may have experienced, some of the problems that, may, that we may have experienced could be resolved. We could cope through this loss and problems by being spiritual. So that's the thing that was discussed by the group of Miss Lopez, Supnan, Habiatan, Supnet, Bolongan, Pasqua, and Pine. Okay, so this is the PPG group. Political self is another concept, aspect of the self which is quite controversial nowadays, especially with the upcoming election. Okay, but what I would like you to remember, if ever you would be old enough to elect, or if you had influence members of your community, your parents or elders, would be the statement of Senator Miriam Defensor Santiago, wherein she said, we're looking for a real leader who will implement, not someone who could promise a lot of things. But this is not a personality contest. Dapat may academic excellence, professional excellence at moral excellence okay so try to think about it next we also discussed digital self wherein we are now influenced by social media that sometimes we project a different self we call this as impression management the thing that we reflect in our social media would already be categorized would already be edited so that we could reveal not a who we who we really are, but the 
idea of the self that we would like other people to know us. Anong ibig sabihin nito? Sometimes in social media, the person do not represent who he really is. Even though people would say, ah, totoo yung YouTube vlogger na yan. Uh, nakaka-relate kami. But not everything that they present is the real them. Okay, why? Because we could always edit. Even though you're... Pr- you're problematic or you do not have money for that for that matter, you could always show some good um, tourist spots, but it doesn't mean you have visited. That's impression management, okay? The projected sense of self that we do in social media, okay? And then the things that we should always remember in social media, we should always be responsible. We should be the, we should set boundaries of things that we should share. Things that we should comment on. Do not try to dip your fingers in a certain issue that you do not have any authority discussing it with or arguing it with. Okay, clear? Next. So the last part of our GE self would be Unit 3, Managing and Caring for the self. So for this one, the main thing here is learning. When we talk about learning, learning is a permanent change in behavior as a result of experience. Learning is something which is active. There's a need for you to get involved. Sana nga, no, ang brain pwedeng i-download lang o kaya i-upload lang yung mga contents, alam mo na lahat. But that is not how learning occurs. Okay? And learning is built from prior experiences. Like Immanuel Kant, prior experiences, prior categories could influence who we are. That's why for mindset, if we say that we cannot do it and do not challenge ourselves, then really we could not learn anything. Okay. Next, learning occurs in a complex social environment that there are things, even though you're quite intelligent, kahit matalino ka, there are things that you do not know what the onset, that you need other people to help you. Okay. That is the zone of proximal development. So do not be afraid to ask for help. That's why we always advocate for groupings, group discussion. Okay, next, authentic context. Learning occurs in an authentic context, meaning if we would like you to become a reflective person, we will not ask you to define what is reflective thinking, but instead we will have to devise some activities that will help you do reflective thinking. Because that's an authentic context. And lastly, learning requires motivation and different types of engagement. Okay. So we also discuss metacognition, which is the awareness and regulation of our thoughts and feelings. Okay. Some of you shared their different metacognitive strategies. So um, this is another work of Ms. Kabahar. She's quite, she's really an eloquent lady. Okay, so this could be some of the learning or the metacognitive strategies that she used, evaluating my prior knowledge, thinking aloud, asking myself questions, taking notes from memory, and testing and evaluating. Okay, so these are metacognitive. Or from the work of Ms. Athena Sheena, from back, she would have here different metacognitive strategies a very concrete one like if there is already the finals week she would have to make a schedule and then start with doing the task then passing the requirements on time then figuring out how to make the task or accomplish the task and then making sure that the task or the quality of the task is at par, meaning quality, talagang reflection na college student yung sinasamit. So those could be metacognitive strategies that you could do. Okay. Or the work of Miss Yada. So when I ask them, this is a different way of presenting. So may tanong during my learning style, may sagot siya yung ginagawa niya, ano yung mga basis niya from literature, at ano yung implementation niya based from the basis from the literature okay some of her classmates almost have the same answers with her but the only difference and i think i believe she's the source is that there's the reflection part okay self-efficacy meaning the belief in yourself that you could do and execute the behavior okay clear 
So if you say, I am self-efficacious, I know I can do it, and I will be successful. So it starts with, I'm not sure if I could do it. Then try it. Changing your uh, mindset. I could try. Take it as a challenge. Take it as an opportunity. Then if you could do it, then that could increase your self-esteem. If you cannot and try and work, uh, go back to maybe, you could ask for help from other people. Until such time, you would say, I did it. That is self-efficacy. Okay. Goals would be an important part of our learning process. Trying to make our goals specific, challenging. And our goals could be influenced by a lot of things, a lot of personal characteristics. But what I would like you to remember is that when you have a goal, make sure it is a SMART goal, wherein it is specific, measurable, achievable, relevant, and time-bound. A good example for this one is, in the next two weeks, I will write in my diary or notebook one to two things I like about myself, about my life, and about my family. What's the purpose? So that you could increase your self-esteem and confidence. Okay, growth mindset. Ibig sabihin, you look at things, something which is not fixed, something which would give you opportunity for improvement. Okay, clear. Because if you say, I'm not good at it, then you will not try to do things so that you will be better at it. Okay. And then we also discuss personal health management, meaning caring for yourself. There are a lot of health risk behaviors and there are a lot of stresses that we experience. Stressors could be the source of stress. Strain would be our reaction to stress. Okay. And um, a person who is experiencing stress may have some or may have different ways on dealing with it. Okay. One of the things that I like about your reflection on resilience for synchronous, for asynchronous as well as for modular, I ask you what is resilience. And according to Miss Salvador, this could be ways for her to become resilient. This could be some of the factors that could help him become more resilient, which is have positive emotion, encourage yourself, create positive cycle, make a decision and commitment. Lastly, try to expand your social life Ask for help if you need it. Okay, so those are things you have. Okay, so as we end this lecture, let me just say, Agyamanakapu, this is a very informative, challenging, and satisfying semester. It's Every semester is different. Every class, be it engineering class, forestry class, um, IT, CSIT class, or even BS biology class, it's different. The way I look at it would be, we all have to remember Alexander Pope's statement, to err is human, to forgive divine. There may be things that we may not agree on. There may be things that I have said that you may not agree on, but that's part of learning. Okay, clear? We learn to move on. Move on, move on then, pag may time, Wag magtatanim ng sama ng loob. And just in case I was able, I was mean, I was not approachable, I was not available, it's for me high time to say, hopefully you could forgive me and we are trying. Good day. Stay safe and healthy. <music>